that it's so much easier to encounter skeptical arguments now than it was just 20 years ago. Yeah, my, my favorite uh, book on this that everyone should read is called Are We All Scientific Experts Now? by mm. the sociologist of science, uh, Harry Collins. It's mm. a short book. You can read it in a weekend, and it's just a brilliant discussion of the very sorts of things that we're talking about. But he talks about different levels of, and kinds of expertise, and it certainly is possible that you can have people who weren't, in a sense, formally trained in the methods of a particular discipline who may, through their own extraordinary efforts, um, you know, gain a certain level of interactional expertise and, mm. and have some familiarity with the sorts of claims and theories and be able to make a skeptical uh, argument. I think sometimes this idea that unless you're a scientist, all your all your possible logical inferences are somehow inferior. Mm -hmm. You know, scientists scientists are better in that they they've trained for years and years to acquire certain specific skills. That's the sense in which they have a sort of epistemic authority with respect to certain claims. Mm -hmm. But scientists aren't necessarily better reasoners, for mm -hmm. example. Scientists aren't necessarily better moral philosophers or policy experts. And so sometimes you'll have scientists making these very uh, bold claims about, you know, the policy that they think obviously follows out of their scientific findings mm -hmm. or how you should behave or how you should accept this finding in your own life. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not experts in value claims. They're not experts in, in seeing entailments of ideas. I mean, they're probably better than the average person. So if you're a well-educated person who isn't an expert in a certain field, you know, the thought that somehow you should bow before the, 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 the statements of any scientist in an area that you're, you're skeptical about, I, I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, scientists <laughs> do train for a lot of years to get highly difficult and uh, counterintuitive sets of, of, of skills that allow them to, you know, uh, uh, you know, have a, a genuine authority when it comes to certain types of claims. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, there's no easy answer here. This is why I, I loathe the you're either pro-science or anti-science discourse right. that comes out in the, the popular media where, you know, if you're on the left, you're like, oh, I'm pro-science. And then you say, so really, what can you explain this theory? And very often it's like, well, no, I don't actually understand how it works. I just know that I'm supposed to be pro-science because right. I'm part of this, you know, political group. Or, you know, uh, you're anti-science because you don't support this particular view. You know, there's some research on this where, you know, on climate change, for example, regardless of your of your view uh, in, in, in the public, whether you're sort of pro or anti or skeptical or whatever it is, you, you, you tend to have similar levels of actual understanding of the theory. Mm. So it's not that you know what's going on and that's <laughs> why you support the theory. It's that you know you're supposed to support the theory. Mm. Again, I'm not making any comment at all on the science of climate science. I'm mm -hmm. not an expert in that area, so I completely leave that to others. Um, but but again, this idea that you can just cast aspersions on on people as being in one camp or the other is not the way it goes. Yes. Um, it just give, give give one example here. And during the AIDS crisis in in the 80s, um, there were the you know the doctors wanted to do a randomized control trials so they could test the efficacy of different drugs. And a lot of gay men who were dying said, listen, I don't want to be in the placebo arm of this trial. I just want the drug if you have a theoretical reason for thinking mm -hmm. it would work prior to actually getting the right kind of evidence. And at that time, there was a lot more medical authoritarianism where the doctor said, we know best and you're mm -hmm. out there and we're going to do our science and you're going to give us our data. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these men were so concerned about their mortality that they essentially became experts in the literature. A lot of them uh, learned as much as they possibly could, came to understand the theories, read the articles as they came out, pointed out flaws in some of the science. And so, really? on. so it's it's certainly possible that lay people who are sufficiently motivated and, and care about the topic can, in some cases, uh, you know, acquire a certain type of skepticism that's that's justified and that indeed should be taken account of by the people in the white lab coats. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of people who are total crackpots, and they read a study once somewhere that, and they don't really know how to evaluate it, and they, you know, the study's been discredited, but they still keep bringing it up. Um, that that is a just a vast and serious problem as well. And 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 again, the only thing there, as I can tell, is to to help people be better reasoners and to know when and under what conditions it's appropriate to be skeptical, when mm -hmm. and under what conditions it's appropriate to rely on the authority of someone else. Um, we can't all be experts in every topic, unfortunately, and that mm -hmm. means we have to rely on trust. We have to rely on authority in certain cases, and uh, and so we have to pick and choose our battles. Um, but we should be cautious about asserting that we know something because we, you know, read an article online once, mm -hmm. or we we fancy ourselves to be skeptics. Um, that's not the way to go either. And and uh, you have to skate between these extremes.